Welcome to Free Fiddle Lessons. Um, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to look at um, basic information and equipment that you want when you're starting to play the violin or the fiddle. So um, obviously you need a fiddle or violin. It's the same instrument. Um, sometimes things are set up a little bit different on different instruments. So um, most commonly the bridge um, might be a little bit flatter. Um, not quite so curved on a more fiddle instrument, but really you can play either kind of music on, on, um, on, on the same instrument and call it a fiddle or a violin or both. Um, the other most important piece of equipment is the bow. Um, and with the bow, you need some rosin, which I don't actually have with me. Okay, so when it comes to putting rosin on the bow, first thing you wanna do is tighten the bow. And I will loosen it back up so you can see. So this is how you should store the bow with the hairs loose. Uh, they can jiggle around. And then you use the, um, the screw at the end here and turn it clockwise to tighten the bow. And you wanna tighten it. You can see that bow has a bend to it. That's called the camber. And we want to tighten it to the point where there's some space between the hair and the stick but the bow is not straight. We still want to preserve that bend. So I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. And I like my bow on the looser end, I think, of how people, people like their bows. And I think a lot of fiddle players maybe do. So there's about where I tighten my bow to. I think of it as about a pencil width um, between the hair and the stick. And then to rosin my bow, I have my decrepit little piece of rosin here. And um, you take the bow hair on the rosin, and it doesn't matter what direction. If you have brand new rosin, it helps to scratch it up with a key or a nail or something. Um, so it's a little rough and can take to the hair a little bit better, especially if you also have a new bow that has no rosin on it. So, um, and then I'm going to use these short strokes to rub rosin onto the bow. Um, you can also use longer strokes. That's fine. But for some reason, I like the short better. It feels better to me. It doesn't really matter. I did see one trick um, one time when I was in Ireland years ago. A, somebody teaching a workshop suggested that you can put your rosin up by where your strings are uh, or would be on the violin and use it to practice a straight bow at the same time. So you can do that. Or usually I just rub the rosin on. And I do this, um, you know, maybe once a week, um, sometimes more often. This bow recently, I feel like it hasn't been holding the rosin. I need to rehair it. Um, and so I was playing for a dance the other night, and I re rosin my bow like three times during the dance. Um, but I'm playing a lot during the week, and the usual week, I, you know, probably rosin my bow once or twice. Um, and that's playing for hours and hours and hours a week, teaching lessons and playing for gigs. So there my bow is, nicely rosined, and I can tell if I pick up my fiddle, it's going to have a nice, nice even sound. Oh yeah. If I feel like I've got too much rosin on my bow, I don't want to touch the hair with my fingers because of the grease and oil and any dirt that might be on my hands, but I can kind of take my nail on one of my fingers, and this is kind of awkward to do in front of the camera, and I also have no nails because I don't like them. Okay, the banjo nail. I have a small banjo nail. I can take my fingernail and brush it across the strings, try and, oh, there you got a little rosin cloud. Brush off any excess rosin. And I can also use a cloth or something. Uh, sometimes I'll just use my pants <laughs> to clean off the strings if there's excess rosin that's built up on the strings. Um, and there I am, I'm ready to play. The other thing that I really recommend is a shoulder rest. This is the kind I have in many different kinds, and it's, um, not so much a matter of one being better or worse, but about how it fits you um, and, and your needs. So um, this kind is called a Bon Musica. Um, I like it um, because each piece, the metal, is very, is bendable. So I can create the exact curve that I want. I can twist it, which I have a little bit down on this end, um, to fit my particular body. Um, and the point of a shoulder rest is to hold the violin securely, um, to create some space between your shoulder and the violin to allow the instrument to resonate more, 
Um, but the biggest thing for me is that um, it puts the instrument at the height that you want to be able to just rest your chin on the chin rest um, and not be lifting your shoulder up or craning your neck down, all of, all of which are bad for your body. So um, uh, the other thing is most shoulder rests are adjustable in and out, or some are, not all. Uh, you want to get one that's, uh, if you're playing a full-size violin, for four size or full size. Um, they also come in smaller sizes for smaller violins. Um, and then a lot of them are also adjustable in and out if your violin is a little wider or a little narrower than most. Um, and most are also adjustable up and down, which I think is actually I would be not very inclined to buy a shoulder rest that didn't adjust up and down. You can just use a piece of a piece of sponge sometimes, and there's some shape sponges, and those actually, you know, they, they can work pretty well, and they're a really inexpensive option. Um, also, some people don't use them, but then I see I see more often people than having um, positions that can hurt their neck um, or hurt their shoulders. Um, so the chin rest also actually you can change um, these pieces here. There's a little hole and you can um, loosen those and tighten those and take the shoulder rest off and switch out shoulder rest. This is um, a pretty common kind and I like it just fine. Um, but some people will have one that's central or is a little taller or shorter. So you can be changing the height of your setup also by changing the chin rest. I have never gone to that point with students, but I've had some students on their own who've decided they want to try a different um, chin rest. Um, we can also really change the height by choosing where we put this shoulder rest. If we put it close to ourselves, which I can barely even get on, this is not where I usually put it, the closer it is to you, the more height it's going to give you. So um, I don't have a very long neck. This can go up way higher, um, this shoulder rest. And if I was to put it very close here, I could accommodate a very tall neck, but that's not what I have. Um, so I actually put mine all the way down. These are called the bouts, the lower bout and the upper bout on both sides. So I put mine all the way down, um, very close to the lower bout. And that gives me just the small amount that I need. It does put the shoulder rest a little further out, but I have fairly broad shoulders, so that's not a problem for me. So it's just a matter of finding um, on your own, experimenting or with the teacher, what kind of setup is going to work the best for you. And some teachers might have some extra shoulder rests that you can try different kinds or you can borrow them from uh, other people who are playing and, and just see, hey, can I try your shoulder rest? I want to see how it feels on my instrument. And I mean, the problem there is you don't actually want to move somebody else's shoulder rest out of their special setting. So it can be sometimes hard to, hard to tell, but a lot of music stores will also have different kinds you can try. So this for me is a pretty good setup. Um, the shoulder rest is um, along my body and so it's very comfortable um, and it's at a good height where I'm not lifting my neck up I'm not lifting my neck down I can just hold the instrument here with my jaw and this is how um, this is how you want to be holding the instrument you want to be able to actually have your hands free which takes some confidence to to do at the beginning to go hands free um, but this means your left hand has a lot of freedom in terms of how it's going to move, you can shift. Uh, I don't know if you can see my hand. Shift to higher positions. You can um, use your fingers really properly, which is having your fingers go straight down onto the strings. Um, so that gives you a lot of freedom of movement. Um, the other things that I think it can be helpful to have um, are some kind of tuner, and um, there's a million different kinds these days. Um, but um, I have a number of students, there's two kinds that I'm seeing are kind of most common for people to have. One is called a snark and it's round and I, the thing I don't like about the snarks is it's hard to find a place on the violin for them to clip. Like most people end up clipping somewhere up on the scroll, um, but they don't sit very well. I, I, they do a good job tuning, but I find them difficult to attach. Um, the other kind, a lot of people have, I don't know what it's called, but one that sits and clips right here and just stays on the violin the whole time and it's like this little black box. Um, and that's just a little easier to attach. And those both work by picking up the vibration of the instrument and then showing whether you're right in tune with a little mark that's straight up and down or whether you're a little sharp or a little flat. Um, and 
I think they both also change color, like to green when you're in tune. And I've seen some people who are using that as a tool, um, not all the time, but sometimes when they're playing, if they're working on intonation and the very correct placement of their fingers, they'll just kind of keep an eye on that tuner. If it's staying green, they know that their fingers are um, pretty much in the right spot. Um, and then they're using that to help them learn with their ear, like what's in, what's in tune and what's not. Um, the other things for, especially for fiddle playing, um, I really strongly recommend that people have some sort of recording device. Um, a lot of phones can do that, um, as well as other kinds of electronics. Um, or some people have something special that they just use for music and keep in their fiddle case. Um, and you can get things that are quite inexpensive.